I used to work at Lawrence Livermore National Lab, and I w once participated in a meeting where we all sat around the room and thought about how could we manipulate geophysical systems to use it as a weapon. The meeting was about weaponizing geophysical interventions. That means, you know, could you somehow interfere in Earth functioning in a way that you could use it as a military weapon? Could you change climate? Could you, what could you do in terms of manipulating the sort of Earth's physical systems to, as a weapon? Well, you know, some of the ideas were, were, okay, we could, maybe we could blow up hydrogen bombs, you know, underwater, offshore, and make a tidal wave that would go over a city. And, you know, the result was, well, isn't it easier just to drop the hydrogen bombs on the city? You know, that, that there, now you could imagine, though, say, putting pathogens in a cloud, let the cloud, uh, you know, go over somewhere, then would rain down on your enemy and create, you know, do chemical or term warfare in this kind of way. And that might work against something that we say is big as the former Soviet Union, where, you know, you could be pretty sure that within a few days th that cloud would rain out. Uh, I believe this is in relation to the idea of chemtrails, which is a lot of currency on the web. Uh, I can say a few things about that. That I work uh, at a nuclear weapons lab, Barnes Livermore National Lab, and working with Edward Teller, who's often regarded as the father of the hydrogen bomb, and Wall Wood, uh, we, we attempted to get funds to do geoengineering research, and we were unable to get any support for that activity. And so I figured Edward Teller working in a national, in a Nuclear Weapons Lab can't get money for it, there's probably no such program. More money for the Pentagon when its own auditors admit the military cannot account for 25% of what it already spends. According to some estimates, we cannot track $2.3 trillion in transactions. $2.3 trillion, with a T. That's $8,000 for every man, woman, and child in America. Fiscal year 1999, $2.3 trillion missing. Fiscal year 2000, $1.1 trillion missing. And DOD is the number one reason why the government can't balance its checkbook. The, uh, I also do not believe that George Bush and his administration cared enough about climate change to do, uh, undertake secret programs to try to offset climate change. If he was going to do something secret, I think it would be kidnapping people and torturing them. But I don't think it's about addressing the climate change situation. And so, I think what people are seeing are ordinary contrails and imagining that it's part of a geoengineering program, but I don't, do not believe there is any such program. Hansen is arguably the world's leading researcher on global warming. He's the head of NASA's top institute studying the climate. But this eminent scientist says that the Bush administration is restricting who he can talk to and editing what he can say. Politicians, he says, are rewriting the science. Well, there'll be none of that tonight, because James Hansen is telling what he knows on 60 Minutes. In my more than three decades in the government, I've never witnessed such restrictions on the ability of scientists to uh, communicate with the public. There are known knowns. There are things we know we know. We also know there are known unknowns. That is to say, we know there are some things we do not know. But there are also unknown unknowns. The ones we don't know, we don't know.